Merry Christmas everyone, it's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. This video we are going to be discussing, ah, for some reason I forget, foreign keys. Just like in the primary keys video, I said we kind of sprinkled this information throughout the series, but this one's kind of just gonna put it all together, but mostly we are going to be discussing column attributes related to foreign keys. So foreign keys reference primary keys. When you make a column a foreign key, you are saying every single value in this column has to be a value that exists in whatever column we're referencing. That's essentially what a foreign key is. Now, a foreign key has to reference a column that is unique. It kind of goes back to that example I gave you of some guy coming up to you on the street and asking you for some information. If you don't have a specific way on how to identify a row, it's hard to reference that data. The same thing applies for foreign keys. The foreign key needs something it can reference that is unique, so that way it knows exactly what row you are talking about. This would also include primary keys because primary keys themselves are unique. Now, when you create a primary key, I'll put that over here, it is automatically unique and not null. What about foreign keys? Well, foreign keys are not these by default. This is something you have to choose. Do you want the foreign key column to be unique? Do you want the foreign key column to be not null? And that requires some thinking on how we want these databases to be designed. So the easiest way to think about this is rather than having tables referenced this way, it's to rotate the whole thing and create parents and children. So the foreign key down here is the child. PK up here, the primary key, is the parent. This allows us to kind of think about things a little bit differently put this into like a family tree kind of thing. So when we do this, rather than thinking of a column referencing another column, think of an individual row referencing an individual row. Because when we make a foreign key column, that's essentially what we're saying. We're saying a row for this column has to reference another row. So to make that a little bit more concrete, let's use some actual data. Here we have a row and it has a column with the value of seven. And here we have a child row that has a value of seven pointing back to that seven. So this here would be inside of a foreign key column. So if you wanted to draw that out, we'd have a table, probably an ID for this table, and then an ID for the other table. And this would be a foreign key. So we could have like two, seven, for example. We could have three, seven. We could have four, eight. This individual row references this parent. So does this row. So we actually have two rows that reference this parent. So that's kind of the way this design works. This is how foreign keys work. So we're just going to write parent and then two children. Now we need to ask ourselves, what is the unique and not null constraints going to do to these rows? So first, let's draw these out. The first one, unique. That means if we have a child with like the ID of seven referencing the parent, we cannot have another child referencing the same parent. That would not work. This is basically the way you design a one-to-one -one relationship over two tables. That means this child is going to have to reference a different parent. So here the child references the parent, and here the child references the parent. But we can't have two children referencing one parent. That's what the unique constraint will do. And I call these attributes, that's another name but there's a slight difference and we'll discuss that in a future video. But essentially, an attribute can be a constraint. These are both examples of constraints, but not all attributes are constraints. Sorry, kind of off topic, so don't worry about that, but <laughs> that's what the unique constraint is going to do. So if we have two tables, and we'll draw each row as a line, just for simplicity, and let's say this is the primary key and this is the foreign key, one row, can reference one parent, but that parent cannot be referenced by another column. That's not allowed. That means there's exclusivity between this child and this parent. That's the only association. We can't have it like this or anything like that. Now, what about the not null constraint? What that's going to do is basically force every single child to have a parent. So if we have another child over here, we could theoretically have a null for the value of what the parent is. And in that situation, there would be no parent. But if we say not null, we're basically saying every single child has to have a parent. But 
if we're using unique, we couldn't do that. We'd have to point it to a different parent. <laughs> so whenever you have a foreign key, ask yourself the two questions. Should it be unique and should it be not null? Would it make sense for the child to exist with no parent, just orphaned all by himself? Or does it make sense that it has to have a parent? It really just depends on what you're working with. More often than not, not null is going to be applied, but not always. So that's a rough overview of unique and not null for foreign keys. Hopefully that was helpful. I know we didn't discuss everything in foreign keys, and because of that, we're going to talk about them a little bit more in the next video. So be sure to watch that because we are going to be discussing the on delete and on update clauses. These are two more things you need to consider when you're creating foreign keys. So that's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe and click like on this video, and I will see you in the next one. Yeah, yeah.